You may have noticed something peculiar about all the Babadook memes in my last video, but it had the kind of organic memification and cultural staying power that studio execs pray about before bed. You can bring me the boy. Babe, you're literally gonna be swimming in boys. One fine autumn day in 2016, after the Babadook had been released for a comfortable year and a half or so, Tumblr user Instagram made the following post. Whenever someone says the Babadook isn't openly gay, it's like, did you even watch the movie? If you've ever done any kind of social media work for a company, you know boomers always seem to think that so-called digital natives have some kind of formula for making things go viral. In actuality, the internet is more like a primordial soup of chaos and noise whose trends are unpredictable to the point of being almost completely arbitrary. There's very dark magic in that cauldron. Better be careful how you fuck about with it, because more often than not what emerges will completely defy any and all predictions. This isn't to say that the Babadook can't be subjected to a queer reading in good faith. Most are can be subjected to any kind of reading. That's half the point of art. The Babadook, like queerness, is something that can't be ignored, bullied, or prayed away. Once you're aware of the gay, it's there forever. It's power to disrupt you and or your family's life, only growing the more you try to suppress it. That's a perfectly sustainable queer reading of the Babadook. But for a few months after that fateful Tumblr post in 2016, the kind of analysis that would normally just be published in an obscure film journal and promptly lost for all time became the reigning icon in queer activism. A couple of people reblogged the post, somebody photoshopped the Babadook into the LGBT section on Netflix, and bing bang boom, the meme of the day became insisting that the Babadook is openly and proudly gay. It's canon, basically. I mean, he created a pop-up book of himself for the drama of it all. Y'all realize that the Babadook was just her depression, right? Uh, no. The Babadook was a man who fearlessly and proudly loved other men, in spite of society telling him that his love was wrong. Like watch the movie why does tumblr always do too fucking much it's it's just a movie a movie about a gay man who just wants to live his life in a small australian suburb it may be just a movie to you but to the lgbt community the babadook is a symbol of our journey the b in lgbt stands for babadook and everybody knows this i cannot understand whether they're serious or not we're dead fucking serious we don't tolerate ambiguity in the baba discourse get yourself right before you come on here again this snowballed into the kind of mania worth the envy of any good trolling campaign, where the line between joke and serious discourse was constantly in flux, perfectly in avoidance step with the frustration of anyone who tried to concretely define it. The point of a good troll is to perform the most flamboyant tango possible with someone who doesn't know they're being danced with. It's a show of rhetorical dominance for its own sake. Some media scholars describe trolling as an exercise in nihilism, but I don't think that's entirely right, because trolling, like all other human communication, serves a political purpose. And just as a side note, I don't mean political as in left-wing policy and right-wing policy. I mean it in more basic definitional terms of having to do with establishing relationships and hierarchies between people. The phrase exercise in nihilism is itself an oxymoron. If you're exerting effort toward a goal, you are by definition not acting in a nihilistic spirit. A troll is an anti-communicator, someone whose express goal is to jam a wad of gum into the gears of a sincere conversation. The reason trolling is often associated with activism is because its political purpose is to demolish all previously respected structures of rhetoric. It's a practical application of that philosophical maxim that crops up again and again in internet culture that may well come to define 21st century communication as a whole. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. It's pretty clear how this can be co-opted into expressly antisocial and malicious movements. Trolling is an inherently destructive action. But by the same token, it's also pretty easy to see how powerful trolling can be. All social movements are inherently destructive. That's what subversion is, a dismantling of previously self-evident truths. Not for nothing have minorities of all kinds historically often seen themselves in the monster of every horror story. So let's reevaluate the Babadook and its metaphorical function under these conditions. The Babadook is a monster that takes the form of a perpetually smiling little guy in a top hat. As we've previously established, he is a species of clown, which means he is mocking you just by existing. And yes, by the way, this does mean that internet trolls are also a species of clown. The Babadook is also sort of vague around the edges. Because he's a metaphor for an internal experience, he's difficult to define in the ways we're used to doing with monsters. He's not a ghost or a vampire or a demon associated with any kind of familiar religious framework. He's a broadly clownish... You're gonna feel like a brand new whatever you are. He's a fun. He's the Babadook. 
His name is nonsense mush because he has no individual purpose. He is a crude and malleable hollow shape into which you pour all your own pathologies without even realizing that's what you're doing, giving it more and more power to harm you the whole time. So why is this creature something the queer community would willingly associate themselves with? Are you kidding? Look how powerful it is. Look how it completely upends lives just because the person most scared of it refuses to admit it exists. Unlike race or class, sexuality is invisible to others unless it's addressed directly. An association with the Babadook is a sort of impish indulgence at the fun of bothering straight society. An assertion of queer people's right to torment. The right to be a problem. It's trolling for good, an activity for which horror is extraordinarily good at providing the raw materials. So much activism on behalf of oppressed minorities focuses on the unjust experiences of the victimized. It's very high-minded, saintly stuff. Appeals to people's better nature, a plea to imagine yourself in their position. Those are necessary arguments for sure, but they leave the irrationality of bigotry unaddressed leaving a big vulnerability right in the center of the cause, which is that it's very difficult to appeal to the better nature of people who are committed to not caring about you. It's a dangerous game to play, mucking around in the dregs of the mean, the mocking, the vulgar, coarse and rude, but if you stitch those shreds of garbage together in just the right way, you can tap into the greatest rhetorical point trolls have managed to unearth and deploy better than anyone. Jeez, for someone who claims to be so much better than me, I sure do bother you a lot. If she spills the word or turns a look, you can't shake the Baba Duck. Dressed in shadow and poised to attack, here she comes, hear the Baba Cat Cat. Mom's worst nightmare, queen of the night. Jump in bed, don't turn off the light. If it's in a word or it's in a book, you better get ready to be Baba.